what we got here. What is that? 204? That's pretty dang good. Charlie, beating that diabetes. Like the last few months have had the hardest time getting his blood sugar under control and then went to a new vet and got him on a new routine. Seems to be working out. Was that gross? Sure, nobody wants to see the trash can. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. There's Charlie, very old man, very sugary. I started the video inside because everybody was here like, what, 30 seconds ago? <laughs> No, everybody, everybody always wants to see the pets, but they're gone. Everybody's gone. Cosmo's here. Say hi, Cosmo. A kiss? Okay, little kiss. Thanks, Cosmo. Then Turbo's gone. He was laying here waiting to go outside. Just vanished. Because the food's gone. I was feeding the cats and then fed the dogs and the birds and the tortoise and everybody finished eating. So now, of course, no dogs anymore. There's Pumpkin. You say hi, bite. Pumpkin, where are you going? You gotta go? She's always in a hurry. Turbo! Here's Turbo! Come on, Turbs. There he is. Good boy. There he is. Good boy. All right, let's go outside. Come on. I know. So exciting. Get to do a garden tour. Walk around and talk to myself in the camera for probably an obscenely long time. Oh, I should have mentioned that. Welcome to the April garden tour. You go out. You go out. There you go. I don't even really know where to begin. There's so much to talk about out here. Not a lot as far as the plants are concerned, because April was a pretty cool month, so as far as the garden goes, there's a garden bed back there. Why would, I don't know why I decided to point this in a direction where you can't even see a garden bed. Here's one. Look at that, see? Not much going on. So I figure, go through and talk about what's waking up, what's going well, and what might be dead, and then focus a little bit more on some of the new plants and new plans. Plan slash hopes, daydreaming type things for the garden this year. I have started, <laughs> you can, okay, you can see that. It's not looking great, but I have started moving the tropicals out. I moved, a, oh, I was going to say a lot. I moved several of them out a couple of weeks ago. They had to go back in for a day or two, maybe it was three days. We dipped into the lower 30s and upper 20s. The croton and the Eureka palm over here. That Eureka palm. I love that palm tree. It has grown so freaking much. Look at all those trunks. The thing's just turning into a monster. I mean, they get way bigger than this, but considering you know, I've had the thing for like, what, seven, eight years? Nice to see some size on it. Both of these plants I've talked about before many times, just because I have to explain why they look the way they look right now. I don't spend a ton of time, or in this case for this year, no time hardening them off to the sunlight because I have found that it takes so long with these two plants specifically that it actually works out faster to just stick them in the sun, let them throw a fit, it'll drop some leaves, flush back out with new ones. That takes about three weeks to a month hardening them off, like fully hardening them off to where they can take full sun. Takes like six to eight weeks for these two and they usually still throw a fit, drop some leaves and scorch despite being hardened off. Not as dramatically as they do when I move them right into the sun, but it's just it just makes more sense this way. At end, don't really have shade out here this time of year. Something I didn't mention in the last garden tour, but have mentioned in another video, the maple tree that's back here got a major prune a couple of months ago. It really needed it. It was rubbing up against the side of the house. It's planted too close to the house. I talked to an arborist about cutting it down. The suggestion was, why don't we prune it up see if that's something that maybe you just do that every few years, if that might do the trick. I, w I would really prefer to just cut it down, to be honest, but give this a try. I don't like to cut down trees, but it's the roots that I'm more concerned about. It's not planted very far from the house. That needs to be another good 10 feet out from the foundation. So I don't know, we're just gonna keep an eye on it. Pruning it, yeah, that helped with it rubbing against the side of the house, but also isn't that just gonna encourage more root growth out from the bottom and the foundations like, 12 feet that way, mm, might be a big problem someday. I don't know. But the bright side is there's going to be a lot more sun over here than there ever has been. Well, not ever. That tree used to be very small, I assume, at some point. I can do more stuff over here with sun-loving plants. I have always put sun-loving plants over here, just haven't gotten the best results out of them from year to year. So this year, I, it would be ideal if I could get another Eureka palm to go on the other side of this hot tub here, but I'm not going to find another one this size that will fit into one of those containers that, that that's probably not gonna happen. Which is fine, symmetry is nice, but I just need to get that out of my mind. Also moved out the Reflexa, only shown a little bit of stress from being moved out, not too much. See where there's some oxidation going on in there. I have this tucked back where it's not 
getting a ton of sun. The Eureka Palm is doing a fairly good job of shading it. I might need to scoot it back a little bit further though. Now that I'm seeing that discoloration on there, I think that that would probably be a good idea. Somatophyllum, uh, somehow not throwing a fit. This thing always throws a fit when I move it out, it, into the sun that is, but it's fine, which is weird, but I'm not gonna complain. Bismarckia overwintered wonderfully. Got a couple new fronds out of it, another one coming up. The, <laughs> the Musa, it's, it's not thrilled about being moved out. I did let it take some cold. So some of this is shock. The nice thing about a banana is I can just cut that entire top off. It'll flush back out with new growth. Really hardly a setback at all. They reflush so, so, so quickly. Oh, and the espaliers. Those are new. If you've watched the videos, the vlogs, then they're not new to you. I have a honey crisp here and a gala. Need the two different ones to pollinate. Well, I could have gotten two honey crisp, but they didn't have two honey crisp espaliers that I liked. Plan with those is to go over here up on this hill behind all this stuff. It used to be a potting area. I'm gonna get rid of all that, clean this whole area out, put some espaliers up here with a backdrop of our borvites, arborvates, whatever you wanna call them. Thuya occidentalis back there against the fence line to have a nice green backdrop and help add some privacy. That will look nice. Just waiting to get those arbs. I'm going to be planting, I believe nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, probably nine of them through that fence line back there. I know it's not a great view. There's a whole thing I'm working on over here where I'm just waiting for some things to get here. And once they're all here, gonna do a big project for this whole area, hopefully by mid-May. We'll see, I don't know. The bamboo, oh, the crisp, this is still out here. I was supposed to put that away. It's, it looks so nice at nighttime. I <laughs> wanted to put it away. It's, it's so sparkly and glittery and bright, but I, I know this is getting ridiculous. Wow, that looks so much better. Just having a nice empty gap here. I know, probably a silly thing to resist putting a Christmas decoration away in April, but it just looks so nice. That, it's, a, no, that's gonna bother me. I have to do something about that. Like it really matters because this whole entire area is a mess. I have recycling over here, a fountain that I'm repairing. A few annuals and perennials need to be planted over in the corner, but this, this, that's what's driving me crazy. It's not like I'm not surrounded by plants right now. I may as well throw something in there and do something with the spot. Oh, yeah, this'll work. I should use this. Let me grab this. Camera's not pointed at me, so that didn't mean anything to anybody. Try and straighten that out, get a better angle. So it fills out that spot better. And now I need some color. Grab a begonia. Begonias are great. Drop a begonia in here. I'll take the hanger off later. Okay, that's better. Yeah, there's just bags of mulch in there to hold that ornament up higher in the container. This is, that'll do. I just said the Reflexa needed some more shade, so this is a shadier spot. This is where those will hang out for a few weeks until the palm trees come back from the greenhouse, and then I have a different plan for this spot right here, and, well, and for the begonia and the Reflexa, but they need a place to hang out, so that'll work. The bamboos, that's <laughs> the whole reason I started talking about this spot. They had some pretty bad winter damage. Talked about that in the last garden tour. I had said that if they didn't bounce back with some kind of vigor, I was gonna get rid, well not get rid of them, but take them out of these big blue pots and move them into the landscaping into a bamboo barrier area. They're flushing back out, so the bamboo can stay. I'm very happy about that. There are some dead canes in there I need to cut out, but not that many. The new canes that are coming up are kind of puny and pathetic, so that's disappointing, but it's okay, I'll take it. I'm just glad that it's not dead and happy that it's filling back out because it just, it looks so, pretty over turbo you gotta move dude i forgot the joys of having turbo outside with a tripod for whatever reason when i have the tripod out here he clings to it he clings to my legs and to the tripod i spend all of my time trying to not trip over the dog begonias those are going to get divided up planted around the garden in containers and whatnot during the growing season for now that's good i already talked about that right this is good looking forward to getting these containers planted up with some annuals and get some color going back over here that bamboo, it's just so graceful. I like the way it moves in the wind. It looks beautiful after it rains in the morning. The dew settles on the leaves. They're just a peaceful plant, an aggressive grower, but aesthetically very peaceful. These are the yellow bamboos, if you were wondering. That winter, negative six degrees Fahrenheit and multiple days of negative temperatures that weekend in December. So I really thought these were going to die or die back and come back. I figured their roots would be hardy. 
I'm really happy to see that some of the canes survived. They're good into zone six, but in a container, you just never know since they're so much more exposed to the elements. Which leads me to the Euonymus. I'm trying to, I don't know, how am I gonna get back there? I'll just have to crawl back, get back here to have a look at them. The Euonymus. There they are, they're flushing back out. And I see, I have a few weeds to clean up. I don't get back here very often, as you can tell. I transplanted these from the back of the Laurel Hedge, talked about all this in the last garden tour. I'll refer back to that one if you want to know more. I relocated them because I thought, oh, it would be nice to have some evergreen screening back here and this would be a good spot for them. And I, I guess it's okay since they didn't die and they're flushing back out, so that's good. I do see there's some dead growth in there that I'm probably going to have to cut out, but I'm just going to wait a few more weeks before I start doing any of that. I am going to come in here though and cut out all these volunteer, these weeds that are back here. Those have got to go. To mulch too. Look at that. It's got bare dirt over here. That would help them rebound having a nice layer of mulch on top of them to help keep the ground nice and moist. Okay, that was chaotic back there. Oh, the peach trees, bonfire peaches. They are putting out lots of little babies that never want to focus. I always have the hardest time getting the show on camera. There they are. Little fuzz balls, lots and lots of them. The spring, it's been so, it's been hot and cold. It's been a very odd spring for a lot of us, right? I wasn't sure if I was going to get fruit out of them because they flowered and then we had a cold snap, but most of the flowers survived. Then we had another cold snap. I just wasn't expecting much. It's not one that I'm going to eat. Apparently good for canning, maybe for cooking. If you were to like really sugar them up in a frying pan or something. I just like the bonfire peaches in general. Both of these, one on each side, go in the driveway during the summertime. The spring grove arborvitaes that are back here, those are going in some containers over there <laughs> in a few weeks. I'm laughing at turbo, I'm not just like randomly laughing. And the palm trees will be back from the greenhouse and those will go these larger blue containers. I tossed a couple of landscape roses in front just for a little bit of extra color because there's just, there's no color out here this time of year. I don't do a lot of bulbs because it's just so unpredictable what you're going to get with them. Survivability wise, like whether or not the squirrels and rabbits, what kind of, what it's just, I've, there have been years where I've planted hundreds and barely gotten anything out of them because they would get demolished or we would have a random really bad cold snap after they had already come up. So I don't do a ton with them. And that's why there's just not a ton of color out here in the springtime. And so many of my plants are dieback plants. It's, it's just not a lot to look at. I've been adding more evergreens over the last few summers, but by evergreens, I mean things like sable palms, sable miners, which are small little shrub palms. And those got killed back dramatically by that cold snap. So didn't really get that evergreen effect from them. That's all right though. Do what you want. I know, abrupt change. My phone rang, had a phone call, so I sat down here on the glider to take the phone call, and then he crawled underneath here, which was interesting. He came out with a ball. Well, I'll throw it. I just, I had to switch hands. I'm not a lefty. Sorry, Turbo. I don't know if he feels like swimming. The water's warm. You gonna get in? You can swim. Go get it. Good boy, Turbo. So that was a good jump. I don't, what was I talking about? Oh, the sable palmettos. I wasn't quite ready to move on to that yet, but it's fine. Things can be disorganized. That's Staying pretty on brand for what I do here. It does all lead together. The thing that I was about to say that I should have mentioned when I threw the Reflexa and the Dragon's Wing Begonia into this container. Normally in the springtime, I put a mule palm over here, but both the mule palms had some pretty bad dieback during the winter time. So they need to stay in the full sun and the spot back here is much more shaded because of the pine trees up there. I'm pretty sure it's just this, this one branch that's doing it right there. If I were to cut that one limb off, I think that there would be some more sun over here, but I don't really want to. Not a significant amount, and I think the tree would look weird without that branch. Windmill palm also had some crown rot, but it's starting to put up a healthy frond, finally. It put out the duds, the ones that were down there inside of the trunk when the damage happened. So you can see this is what was exposed. That's what was inside. Finally pushed those out, and you get some nice looking fronds out of that one. It's going to look a lot better when those come out. And then, yeah, here's the mule palm. I know it doesn't look great, but I'm happy that it's not dead. That's all I really care about. So that's why those aren't over there. There's the other one right there. Not looking great, but still hanging on. Definitely come a long way. Yucca Bristrata, I always forget to talk about it. Here it is. Always has some dieback in the winter time when I have it inside in the growth space. It's also doing its thing. Starting to flush out with some new growth. The roses, those are for the front yard. 
So don't know if those will ever be in a video. They might be, I don't, we'll see. Lots of end sets here that are about ready to be planted up. There are a lot of new plants that I'm gonna keep in the background. I picked those up just yesterday. Hey, that's a cool leaf. Beautiful. Love the red bananas, the end set Morelli ice. Lots of new plants out here. Those will all be in next Saturday's vlog. Not the video that comes out after this one, but the one after that. I went out, did some shopping, picked a few things up. The needle palms. I always forget to talk about these too, but since it's talking about recovery from winter damage, should mention them. There's not much to say though. Looking good. No damage. They got covered. They had lights on them. Flushing out with new growth. I think I might even see some inflorescence popping up down there. Turbo, you should get out of there. That's dangerous in there. They got spiky trunks. Very spiky trunks. I would not want to stick my face anywhere near the inside of one of those things. The sable palms. There we go. Back to it. On the note of the cold damage. This is what I was talking about. They're alive, so I'm happy but it's not like last year where there were nice big fan fronds sticking up over here that's okay they'll recover they're already bouncing back hopefully next winter will be more mild but who knows it just is what it is at least i know the negative six didn't kill them so i know what to do throw the lights on them wrap them up they'll be good i don't like to go beyond that i've spent so many years with like windmill palms and pindos in the ground and had to do some extreme things to protect them during the winter. And it's just, it's a pain in the butt. I don't like doing that anymore. Frost cloth and lights, anti-transpirant of some sort or an anti-desiccant. That's about as much as I'm willing to do these days for the tropicals in the garden or tropical looking plants. That's why they look like that. Maybe I'll build them some boxes or something if we keep having winters like this past winter. That was actually fall, but you know what I mean. Ideally, won't have to do that though. The ostrich ferns, look at them, aren't they beautiful? One of my favorite parts of spring is when the ostrich ferns start to come up. So these used to, years ago, they were all through the very front of this garden bed. And I'm pretty sure it was in a video. I lifted the majority of them out of the front of the garden bed just because I wasn't crazy about how much they were filling out the front. It was making it hard to work with annuals. I pulled the ones that were up here, moved them, and then I'm trying to encourage them to grow along the back wall there. And they're starting to. You can see where they're starting to spread out. It's not as much as there used to be, but it's something. Always nice to see progress when you've waited a few years to see what was going to happen. There's a ginger over here. It's not doing much. Not much at all, but it's not dead either. My bar this year is very low. It's just not dead. Not dead? That's good. That's a flaming torch. That's what most of the gingers out here are that I'm going to be showing. If this had died back, I don't actually think I'd be that upset. I'd, well, I'd be pretty bummed because it's a really large clump and I love it. But there's another type of Hedichium that I think would be better for the spot, and it's called Slim's Orange. It only gets like three or four feet tall. Size-wise, it would look better with everything that's over here, but the Flaming Torch is so big that it's also a statement piece. So I do like having it here. If it's only going to end up putting up a few stalks, though, I'm probably going to pull it and move it to a spot around the corner that's more sheltered. I'm trying that Slim's Orange over here, because with that smaller size, it's also going to be easier to protect it during the winter time. There's a good foot of mulch in this spot this winter, and it, that clump's been here for probably eight years, I want to say, maybe longer than that. So I'm surprised that I haven't seen more growth out of it yet, but it's still early. Again, April was pretty cool, but normally by now I'd be seeing more than this, but it's still, it's still too soon to get disappointed with anything. It could take off and be a massive clump by the end of the summer. Who knows? Hanging basket. Can you see it? I can't see it. The sun's in my viewfinder. Did this in a video, white night alyssum, purple rock crest, a dianthus of some sort. It's been doing really well. They've been enjoying the cool nights. Haven't had to do anything with it other than keep it watered. That's my kind of hanging basket. No deadheading, very simple. Temple of Bloom, look at that, the Hepticodium. Fleshed out nicely. That's put on a good amount of growth. This was only probably maybe two feet tall when it got planted. And then that first winter, it did have some dieback. So last spring i didn't really appreciate the plant and i'd even thought about removing it but this spring since it got more size on it i've been able to appreciate it more in that it flushes out with foliage very early and i like that when all the other trees are bare out here this is putting out some green so that's definitely going to stay i do want to do some pruning on it i might stake it even because i want to train it to grow into a nice vase shape i don't want it to get messy so that's something I need to remember to do and stay on top of. I have a hibiscus here that I completely forgot that I need to cut back. May as well get in and do that since I'm right here looking at it. This is one of the machetos type of hibiscus. You know, they don't 
come back from their old growth. They come out in all new growth. Probably could have done this in the late fall, but I like to wait until they're nice and dry and easy to pull out until I do that. That's good, that's been bugging me. Even get down a little bit further with that so that this is nice and open in the middle because I want all that growth to come out appropriately. And I don't want to accidentally cut out any of the new growth, although at this size, it would be fine. These are all fresh shoots that are in here, so it wouldn't hurt anything. Oh, and allium. I don't remember planting it, but there it is. A few years ago, I planted some bulbs out front here. The mammoth, maybe? White mammoth, white mountain, something. Like, it's supposed to be a really big type of white daffodil in the front here, and it never grew. Nothing ever happened with it. And I had planted some alliums, and uh, I don't think they did anything last year, but here we go. Got something happening this year. That's nice. Bananas coming up. Slowly but short. I mean, it's not that slowly. That big one's probably four and a half feet tall, so I guess it's not that slow. But I had a huge pile of mulch on here up until just a few days ago. So I wasn't really able to appreciate how much of those pseudo stems were there and had survived the winter. I bet those will get nice and big this year. At least I'm hoping. Oh, and the hibiscus here. That is a summer crush. I keep wanting to say candy crush, but that's a game. Pretty sure it's summer crush. Gets about three to four feet tall. It's one of the proven winners hibiscus has a nice bubblegum pink flower on it. I think I'm going to have to move it. It did fine last year until we moved closer into fall, like around September. This spot gets really shady, the angle of the sun changes, and those bananas get really big. So I'm probably going to have to move that somewhere else. I'm happy to see that it came back though, because that gives me the opportunity. Ouch, holy sh**, it's kneeling down on top of a rock. That didn't feel good. Tradescanthia, Polita, look at that. Coming back, not terribly surprised by that. Usually a few of them come back every year, but it was just so incredibly cold I wasn't expecting it. What I'm more surprised by though is this over here. You see that? Let me get in as close as I can. Yeah, those are the Nanooks. I planted a whole bunch of Tragescanthia Nanooks in here last year, and there's a couple more over here that are coming up right around there. I gave it a try. I figured the Polite is hardy, and maybe the Nanook would be the same. And it's looking like it is. However, with the lows and the negatives for all those days back in December, I wasn't expecting them to come back. It's a nice surprise though, especially because they're not really in the mulch line. The mulch that I put up here is much more heavily concentrated, more towards the middle up here. So this wasn't really all that protected. I'm glad to see a couple of those coming back. Some more may pop up. It's still early. Who knows what's going to happen with those. Crinum lily, looking good doing its thing. Glad that didn't die. Had that one for a long time, so that would have been a bummer. So back here, not a ton has changed. Just some more growth. The Hedichiums are coming up. We've got a whole bunch coming up in this back corner. This seems to be a sweet spot right there. There's the least amount of damage to this Sable Miner out of all of them. And the Ginger started coming up first over here and with the most vigor. There's one, two, three, four. There's five or six stalks coming up from that flaming torch right there. None of the Gingers that were over here those aren't coming up over here on this side, so maybe they didn't make it. Won't be surprised. It's okay if they don't, because there's a whole bunch more that I can divide up if I want to. I don't really care, honestly, if they don't come up over there. I can figure that out. Sable miners that are over here pushing out some new fronds, which is good. That's what we want to see, and there's a lot of action back here from the banana cannas. I wasn't sure what was going to happen with those. I've had banana cannas die on me on three different occasions in the same spot right here when we've had really bad winters. The difference though is that I didn't have all of this mulch over. I don't know if you can tell. There's a solid probably eight inches of mulch from right around the edge of this dwarf palm right here that goes all the way through. And that's because I have a pharaoh's mask called Acacia in the middle over here. I doubt it survived, but who knows? Time will tell. The Colocasias aren't doing much of anything yet because we just haven't had a ton of warmth to wake them up. Though the warmth has woken up the gingers and the cannas, so you'd think that those would get going, but nothing yet. Since I've had banana cannas die on me on multiple occasions, or just cannas in general, I was on the fence as to whether or not they were, would have survived that cold, but good news they did there are there a ton tons and tons of them i might need to divide them up actually that might be a bit much i want them growing further back there along the edge of the house the ones that are coming up here in the middle yeah not the middle but the front row i could probably move those however those are the ones that are coming up the strongest too which means that that's 
the warmer spot for them. I don't know. I have time to think about that. I haven't pulled the mulch from over here yet. When it comes to pulling mulch back to wake the plants up, there are a few things that you have to think about, what, which is really just what's the purpose of mulch. Mulch things in the wintertime to help protect them from extreme colds. In the summer, we mulch them to help protect them from extreme heat and retain some moisture down to the soil. That's also part of the winter protection too, is trying to retain some moisture down into the soil. Winter tends to be very dry. Plants aren't pulling up as much water anyways. It depends on where you live. When temperatures start to warm up, if there's still 12, 18, 24 inches of mulch in a spot, that's not going to warm up the plant because now we've moved on to where the mulch is keeping things cool. So have to make sure to get the mulch pulled back in proper timing. It just hasn't been that hot, so I haven't rushed to do it. I just got the banana clumps done, the one over there. And then the one I just showed y'all, that was in the video prior to this one. This spot I have yet to tackle because I have to go in and very slowly excavate around the plants. I just, eh. And there aren't any really hot days coming up in the forecast, so I haven't felt rushed to do it. But the sooner the better at this point because it's not going to be fun pulling the mulch out from around all those cannas that are coming up in there. I don't know why I went off on that tangent about pulling the mulch back. Probably had something to do with something I want to talk about with the pharaoh's mask, but haven't... I don't know. The dots aren't connecting, but there's a little information for it if you wanted it. Little Gem Magnolia that got planted last year. That cold, I was worried about it, but it's looking okay. A lot of the ones around here are looking like this right now. Dropping some leaves, which is fairly normal to have some leaves drop this time of year because they should be about to flush out some new foliage. I can see there are a couple branches that have some die off on them, but overall the plant is alive. And again, my bar is very low this year. As long as it's alive, I'm happy. Black bamboo. I uh, the, talked about this before. This clump is a second clump from a clump that used to be down there and it traveled over here. Then we had a bad winter that killed everything off except for this clump. So I've left it for a few years to let it reestablish itself, but I don't want it right here. And I would say that it has definitely reestablished itself. It has a lot of new growth, the most new growth it's put up in several years. So that means it should be okay to go ahead and move this. I'm going to wait for the canes on there to go ahead and open up all the way and harden off. They start off pretty soft. Once they've done that, I'm lifting this and moving it to a different spot where it's not in the front of a garden bed. I don't, nobody wants really tall things in the front of the garden bed. It just doesn't make sense. There are some canes coming up further back towards the wall. Those can stay. They may perish when I remove this clump. We'll just have to wait and see. The main thing is that I'm happy that this has finally put on enough growth that I can dig it up and move it somewhere else because I want the front of this bed to be open again. Which brings me to the next thing, the Colocasia bikini teenies. Those have been in this landscape for several years now, and I love them. They're beautiful plants. I'm not seeing much out of them yet. Uh, again, haven't had the heat, so that probably has something to do with why. There's one tiny one coming up in here. You can sort of see it right there. But those should be filling up this entire space. They're really big. I'm probably going to pull them all up this year and move them to the back. I did that a few years ago with some of them and I haven't noticed, we can go, just about tripped and fell on my face. I did that a few years ago when I redid this area over here. I think that was 2021 probably. And uh, those have survived and done well. And it looks like there's one coming up right here also. It just makes more sense to me for those to be in the back since they got really tall last year. Like some of them were taller than me. They're not supposed to get that tall, but they were easily six feet high. Oh, and there's another one. Yeah, they grow like weeds. They take over, and I just don't want them in the front of the bed anymore. So I probably around the middle of the month of May, I'll be lifting whatever comes up over here. I'm going to wait till they're big enough to lift them and move them. That'll look a lot better. And probably put them in some other spots around the yard, too. That way the front of this bed is open for annuals and maybe some more low-growing shrubbery of some sort. It's just not giant, huge, five-foot-tall elephant ears in the front of the garden bed. I didn't plant them there, just like the bamboo. They were originally planted further down over there in that corner, but they spread, they move. At one point there was a magnolia here, had to cut it back because it had magnolia scale. I want to say it was a Soulardia, maybe a magnolia Jane or Jane magnolia, I can't remember. Chances are whatever was over there was getting shaded from that magnolia and traveled over here. And these are all plants that travel and spread anyways, bamboo and this particular type of colocasius. I'm not surprised by that. That's just what they do. And you just pick them up and move them. They pull up easily. Kind of fun actually pulling them up. The bananas, 
you can see these have moved into two separate clumps. That happens sometimes. This is a very old clump, been around for a long time. And after multiple times of flowering, since when they flower, the main pseudostem dies off and they pup out. Eventually you just start to see some differentiation. So this clump that's over here on this end, I'm taking that out. I want to do something different with that spot. I don't, I'll probably transplant it somewhere else. I don't really know. I'll figure it out. I have more than enough bananas. So if I get rid of them, that's totally fine too. Have this main clump right here and have a more vast array of plants in this corner instead of just a 12 by 10 foot section of banana trees, which I love. I love the bananas, but there's already a giant clump over there around the corner. And it would be nice to just get some more stuff going on over here. Oh, and the pineapple lilies are coming up. Those are Eucamus bicolors. I say this every year. I have got to lift these up and move them. They don't do well right here. The, they get too much shade. By the time they get flowering, the bananas are big enough that they're shaded. And then you get really long, wonky looking growth on them. And I think they would do great over here. I have another Eucamus over here. I don't remember what it's called. Something glow, maybe? And it's coming up, so I know that this spot's good enough for them, and they would look really pretty having that red in the front of the garden over here. There's a lot more sun over here than right here. Now, you wouldn't think that'd make much of a difference, but the morning sun can come through right here, but over here, it doesn't get it. See the wall? Like, it's just, just past that cut. I have some plants over here that I moved out last night, gave them a spray and a heavy wash in the driveway, and they're just hanging out here for a little bit longer until I decide that they're ready to be moved. So those predator mites really weren't very effective that I used in my growth space this year, so I've had to spray everything when it comes out in the driveway away from where there can be runoff that's going to affect flowering plants and whatnot and get them back here. And then let them dry off and then I've been moving them back, so it's making the process take a little bit longer, but that's all right. At least it's getting the plants clean. Major wheel or honeysuckle got planted last year. It's coming up with lots of vigor. Can't wait for that to fill out this panel of fence over here, which is currently storing <laughs> my tools. I know that's not classy, but it is what it is. It's another Eucamus. I can't remember what it's called. It's been like three years since I've been able to see it. It always ends up being hidden by the dune grass. I need to clear that spot out so I can see it better. This is, well, I don't know how to explain this. Not that complicated. It's a honeysuckle that I dug up and just plopped over here. I need to cut it back. Just haven't gotten around to it. I'll get on top of it, I promise. I don't have high hopes for it. I wasn't able to get much of the roots out with it, so it may not make it. If it does, great. If not, I can get a different one for 10 bucks and throw it in here and have that cover this side of the fence. But there'll be a honeysuckle on each side of the gate here. Nothing going on over here yet because there's a big palm tree in the greenhouse that goes right here. So I'm waiting for that and some irrigation issues to get handled. This line is supposed to run underneath this walkway to the other side. And it got pulled up by a crane that was moving a palm tree around. And you, you know how that goes. When the cranes show up and they're moving your palm trees around, sometimes your sprinkler lines get messed up. It's just part of it. Right? You know how that goes? It's normal stuff, right? Ruby Spice Clethora. This did not do much at all last year because we had a really late freeze and it had butted out and then that freeze killed it back. So I'm glad to see that it's doing something and looking okay. I planted a ton of impatiens uh, just a few days ago and it was in the last video, just an assortment of colors, mostly orange and pink, threw in a few dark purples in that mix. I had mentioned that video that I wanted to take it back further, but I didn't because I wasn't sure where the gingers are. There are a whole bunch of Hedi no, not Hedichiums. What are they? Zingiber, Zingiber Myoga, Silver Arrow and White Feather, I think are the ones that I have here. There's a whole row of them that goes from like right over there all the way down. And I couldn't remember where they were, so I didn't want to dig back further at one disturb the rhizomes and i wasn't even sure if they had survived the winter and somewhere okay here it is right there can you see it maybe i can't see it in my viewfinder it's right there that little little nub so that's a ginger it's there's just starting to come up so it's so hard to see them there it is there's another one right here all the way back like 18 24 inches back from that one which is good because that means that there might be a really nice spread on them this year. They take about three to five years to form really nice looking clumps that take some patience with this ginger. If you live someplace where they die back and have a long winter, that is. In a more mild climate, they'll establish faster than that probably in just a couple of years. But that had me thinking, because I saw that growth first, and I was like, oh, I could have put a whole nother row of impatience back here. And then I saw that coming up and I'm like, well, okay, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. 
I haven't even planted the caladium bulbs in here yet, which I had talked about in the last video where I talked about that I was going to plant them. I think I forgot to mention that I didn't plant them because those go in the back row here and I need to see where those gingers are going to come up. But they'll be up eventually, time traveler hosta. One of my favorite perennials that I have out here. Isn't it just beautiful? I know it's just a hosta, but every time I look at it, it just makes me so happy. I love the leaves on this one and it's looking like it's putting on some size. Last year, stupid airplanes. This was planted, I think two or three years ago. It's a very slow grower for a hosta. It's not one that even gets very big. It's not one that puts off lots of offshoots either. So it's not like you can divide it up all that often. It makes it kind of pricey. Just look at those leaves. They're giant cupped hearts with like a little, looks like someone took a paintbrush and just put a little single swipe of variation in the center on there. And it's nice and sturdy too. Bigger size, more robust. So hopefully that's gonna look pretty cool this year. Nothing from the hardy begonias that were planted over here yet, but that's okay. It's still early. I don't think I would normally see anything from those until like mid-May anyways, right? I'm having trouble remembering. I think that's about right. And then more impatience. Look at them. Look at it. It just keeps going. I don't know how it's going to show on camera. They're freshly, I almost said painted, freshly planted. This is going to be breathtaking in probably just a few weeks. I almost doubled the amount that I planted last year. Took it up further. Went more heavy with the orange and the pink. Here's clear of the white and the light pink. So there's only three colors in here. And I think that that should end up looking really cool. It's going to take some time, but I think it's going to look really nice. I know things are just, they're so messy down here. It's been much messier in the past, but the laurel hedge. Yeah, not much progress since the last garden tour. In fact, I'd say it looks much worse than the last garden tour. I, it's, I, most of them are dead. I had been hoping and thinking that if you just wait long enough, they'll flush back out with new growth. And a lot of you were encouraging me with that, saying that you've had similar experiences and they would flush back out. But some of these, four of them, four of the six, that's just, they're just dead. Like there's nothing. It's just, it's brown. If it's brown, nothing's going to come back out of them. And I am seeing some stuff coming out but it's all the way down at the base, which means that pretty much everything up here is more than likely dead, at least on these two. I'm going to give the whole hedge until mid to late May to make a final decision, but I'm pretty certain the whole thing's more than likely coming out. But the two in the middle, not looking terrible. They looked pretty bad for a while and they're starting to look better, getting new growth out of the plant in all directions, except for the backside. So everything all the way up and around new growth, new growth. So that means that there's hope there. And it means that when that new growth flushes out all the way, I can give them a prune and hopefully get them to flush back out from the inside. That would be ideal because they need to be full. If you can see right through these, I don't want them. There's no point. The whole point's for privacy. And if you can see through them, then why have them? So that's at least good that those are doing okay. And pretty much all the St. Louis area, the laurels, the skip laurels, most of them just look like absolute garbage. A lot of them are dead. That's pretty normal. They just, they don't like those sudden changes, that extreme cold that comes out of nowhere. It, it, it's not clearly not their thing. These two on this end, they have some potential in them. Like there's some new growth coming up in here, but it's every branch that has a little bit of growth is surrounded by dead stuff. So if I wanted to wait several more years to get this to fill back out, to have that privacy, I would, but I don't want to. I would like for this to be a nice looking hedge. So those, they're probably gonna go. Might leave the two in the middle, I, but just have to wait and see. Oh, <laughs> sending off me talking about why things are a mess because these are still dropping leaves. I'm not messing with them too much. I haven't been walking up to them every day and just crumbling them. That was just so you could see how they're doing, which is not well. But I have a rake over there. I've been pulling leaves back almost every single day, mostly to keep them out of the pool, but it's just, it's gonna look dirty until that's done and until all these new irrigation lines get planted. Just the nature of things, still early-ish with projects and whatnot, but I, I'm happy about the impatience. Don't they look great? Things might be messy, but got a little bit of color in the background. I'm liking that. Sitting on the ground now, it feels so awkward filming down here with no privacy behind me. My neighbors, we've talked about it over and over again. They cut down all of their landscaping, so it's just when I'm over here, I'm like standing like right outside their windows and I cannot stand it. I'm gonna be handling that with hedging as well. So there, oh, I was supposed to talk about this. So in the last video, I mentioned that I was gonna clean up this area underneath the mimosa tree, but I was gonna wait because the mimosa tree hadn't flushed out and I have to cut it down. 
I didn't want to do any landscaping over here, but then I said, screw it. And I went ahead and I did some landscaping over here. I put a, I put a pot underneath the mimosa tree there, dug the ground out, got it level through some sand down. That's going to be where that stays. That's a permanent spot for that container. It has a giant hole in the bottom. So I think that's a good spot for it. We'll get it planted up with something that likes some shade and planted impatiens that go all the way through here. There used to be a big glider over here, that big green, well, once red, now green rotting one that's on the other side of the patio <laughs> that was over here. And uh, you couldn't see any of this, but now that it's opened up, I thought it would look nice for those impatiens to go from here down, stop at the path and come back over. And I, st I haven't finished, clearly. Like there's just a rock sitting in front of that pathway there and I still need to scoop all this stuff back. But it's a start. That was only two days ago. There's still a lot of work to do. I have a couple more blue containers that go with that other blue container that will need to be re-leveled. And I have some plants that are going to go in those. And that pretty much concludes the tour of what's going on. I told y'all there are a few other things that maybe I'll try and remember to talk about. But now I'll move on to just talking about some of the ideas that I've had. And I'm going to start with the arbs. The arb situation. Referencing back to uh, uh, not the last video, but the video prior to that one, I had talked about maybe hedging off my fence line with arbs. And I really want to do that. I'm always talking about wanting more privacy back here. If you don't know, it's just there are houses all around me, uphill from me, that all look right down into my yard. My backyard is like a stage in an amphitheater. And it gets awkward sometimes. Not that I don't like my neighbors, but I just don't like being exposed to one, two, three, four, six different households. <laughs> it's just too much. It doesn't make me happy when I'm outside. It's also why I've been talking more quietly and why I'm sitting on the ground because it feels so freaking weird talking to the camera over here. So the arms would be a good start to solving that problem. There are a few things to consider. One is that I need to go with probably two or three per row of fencing there. I'm going to need like 20. So that's going to be very expensive. I'm not going to buy them small and cheap because this is an instant gratification thing. I want it to be a decent size, at least the height of the fence when I get them. The ground over there, it's like cement. It is not easy to dig in. So we're talking about a lot of work, but that's okay. That part of it's kind of fun. It's more rewarding when you're done. But the thing that I have to keep in mind, hey, Turbo's butt. All right, Turbo, your butt, your butt's in the way. Can you move your butt? Thank you. Thanks, baby. Oh, that didn't mean get in my face. Arms like sun. They're often talked about as being shade tolerant, which there is truth to, but they don't really grow in the shade. Not much. You can look at the arbs that are over here so you can tell where it's sunny and where it's shady. These are all the same age. The ones at this end, like at the furthest end, is probably I'd say maybe 10 feet tall, whereas that one down there is probably 15 to 18 feet tall. Something like that. It's hard to tell because the maple tree's in front of it. It's one of those things where when you don't know if a plant's going to work for a spot, just think about what you see when you're out driving around or walking through different neighborhoods. If you look around, at least where I live, I see lots of arbs planted in the shade. People put them around their air conditioning units to hide them. They make little privacy screens around their decks and it works fine, but they stay short and fat. <laughs> they don't, they just don't grow very much. So the concentration of them might need to be heavier from right here and over because it's more shady and it's going to be uneven because where there's sun, they're going to be bigger. So I've had to think about whether or not I was okay with that, with it being wonky. That and it being arbs, you know, if you plant 10 arbs, you're probably gonna have to replace one every few years for a few years because they just, that's just the nature of arbs. But I don't think, yeah, no, I did. I had to replace one of those one time, a long time ago. So that could be the case, but luckily they aren't terribly expensive. Get them usually on sale. That's another thing I'm waiting for is for a good sale to come up before buying like 20 of them. That's, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of money, but it would be so nice to screen off this area. And if that fence line is screened off, then I don't have to stress over this hedge. I love the hedge, the laurel hedge, and you go back to garden tours from years prior, I pretty much always say it's one of my favorite things I've done out here. I love these plants. They just have beautiful foliage, they flower heavily, the pollinators enjoy them, they put out little berries that the birds like. There's so much to love about laurels, at least if you live someplace like I do where they don't grow into massive, gigantic 
just monstrous shrubs. Rarely see skip orals over eight to 10 feet tall here because we have winters every so often that kill them completely back. So I'd have this green back there, get a couple new skip, a couple, four new skip orals to throw in here and uh, just have to deal with it. <laughs> you know, just wait a few years and things will fill in and look nice again. But that was the main thing I wanted to talk about with that was the difference in height and in growth habit. And uh, just if you get online and you're looking for evergreens for shade, someone's at my door, just a package. Don't have to get on top of that right away. If you're looking for evergreens for shade is what I was saying. Well, for one, you got online and look for that. You're going to find a lot of things are recommending trees that get really big and provide shade. That's not what you want to find. But shade loving evergreens. Arbs are almost always listed. And that's been so weird to me because they don't really grow in shade. But I guess that since they don't die in shade, that's enough to put them on the list. They will grow. You have to fertilize more. You have to compensate for the plant not being able to photosynthesize as well as it would like to. But the, it's going to be uneven if you have shade and sun. I think that, that there's really just no other way. I just have to suck it up and deal with it. And that's fine. It's what I'll do. I thought about alternating arbs and hollies or doing like arb and viburnums or something along those lines or every several feet just sticking a different type of not a completely different type of evergreen but again maybe a holly something of the sort but the problem is this area you can see it's more of a field that goes through here and it's very exposed and very windy and broadleaf evergreens are so unpredictable here <laughs> as you can see with the laurel hedge i don't want to spend a lot of money on hollies or anything else to plant along that fence line and then have to deal with like the harsh winter winds drying them out having to deal with that winter burn and just the rare occasion like this year where it might kill them off completely i'd rather one and done it the arbs i don't lose them very often most of the yards i planted them in they usually live a pretty long time so I think that's going to be the way to go there. As far as the fence line up here goes, I'm going to go smaller shrubbery because I don't want to shade the neighbor's house. They're putting in a pool, so I don't think that'd be very nice to plant things that are going to shade their new pool. Is that a hummingbird? Okay, it's not flying, so you can't, you're not even able to see it. I just saw a hummingbird. I get excited. It's the first hummingbird I've seen this year. Yeah, evergreen shrubbery up there along the hillside to help fix that privacy situation. Arbs along here. Was there anything else? Oh, the mimosa. I don't have an update to give on it yet. It doesn't... I can't tell if it's dead. It did have one dead limb on it that I cut off. You can see it over there across the fence. And that looked great. Very big dead branch that got cut off of that. But otherwise, the rest of it still feels solid. Just have to wait for the heat to roll in. A really cool spring. They may not butt out until sometimes like mid to late May. Not ideal, but sometimes it's just the way it goes. Oh, and here's that wall. There were two honeysuckles. Dug those up. Replanting each side up here with something tall and evergreen and uh, working on these containers here. Have a couple of Longilobas sitting in them. I don't think that's what I'm going to use for these blue Miami planters, but we'll see. I had something else envisioned, but the place I ordered them from said they're not going to be able to bring me the plants that I had ordered. Pretty much have something else figured out. I'm just waiting. Waiting a little bit longer for things to not be called out. And the Buckeye. Look at that. Really big. Covered in flowers. Lots of beautiful Buckeye flowers on there. Japanese maple bonsai. Flushed out looking great the uh, what is this the lespedeza talked about removing this last year and i never did it it's not supposed to be an invasive type this is a thumbergii they're supposed to stay where you put them i've had this here for many 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 years and uh, i don't know if it's reverted to its old ways or what's going on with it but if you look around it's spreading like crazy and it's a weeping type. So that's why it's up here on the wall so it can weep over the wall. Uh, I don't, like that's gonna look weird back there having this just grow forward and flop forward. So I think that I just, I need to probably cut that out, but I love the flowers on it so much that what I may end up doing is cutting out this one and leaving the ones that are back there so that they're a little bit further back and they won't drape as far over the wall and obstruct things. That's the main issue that I don't like about it is that it just really, obstructs this whole area over here because it sticks out sometimes like right here that's not really safe the walkway needs to be open but the ones that are further back maybe i'll leave those they won't be able to come over as far that could work that's what i should do like turbo's tunnel turbo you want to go through your tunnel there you go you can do it go on go through your tunnel go go on go on good boy good boy baby good boy no don't eat it don't eat it you do it again 
Turbo, go on, go through your tunnel. One more time. Will you come through the other side? Stay, Turbo, stay. Are you gonna come? Come on, come on through, come on through. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Don't know if that showed up on camera. And the other project I already talked about, Arb's over here, Espalier's there. The last thing is this heap pile mess over here. Bistro set, going to go. Finally came to an agreement with the family that I can get rid of it. There are some people who are for some reason very attached to it. I don't know why, it's nothing special. It doesn't fit. Like you can't push the chairs in, so it takes up a ton of space. Like why, what's the point? Okay, that's not gonna work. That's gonna blow into the pool. Too windy for that today, Turbo, sorry. And <laughs> what I would like to do when the bistro set's gone is put a sofa and a couple chairs and a rug down with a couple tables and uh, there will be uh, some queen palms over here. They think that that'll just look much nicer and more inviting than uh, this very old bistro set that nobody sits at, but for some reason, people want to keep it around. I don't know why. I, I don't like it. It needs to go. So it's going to go. That or it's going to get moved down to that end of the patio. But hopefully, yeah, I didn't put this away. Did you think I put it away? Put it away when I'm done out here. I will have to find a different spot to put that box, the little cabinet thing. It wouldn't be too hard to do that. And I just, won't that look nice? A furniture set with those giant queen palms up above everything that'll hopefully provide some shade because this spot gets really hot during the summertime. You can't do shade sales here or anything of the sorts because the HOAs have some pretty stupid rules. Burglars are an option, but they have to be attached to the home and uh, something with the foundation. It requires a permit. It gets complicated. Just uh, I'd rather just, I can just sit underneath the palm trees. It'll be fine. Or just don't sit there in the middle of the afternoon when it's piping hot and the sun's on you. Get the table under the umbrella. Well, when I get a new umbrella. You're starting off strong with the projects and the things to do. Oh, look at you sitting with your paws crossed. Turbo, you look so dignified. Well, until you open your legs and you got a nasty stick in there. Turbo, that didn't, that didn't sound right at all. Okay, so that's it. I don't know if you can tell. I have no voice. The pollen's really high here. I've been trying to talk in a more calm, quiet manner so that I don't just destroy my vocal cords. I got plants coming in the mail today. So I have to film more videos on top of this one. So that's where I have to wrap it up. Hopefully it was long enough. People like long Saturday videos. There's probably more I could talk about, but that's the gist of it. Things are coming back. Things are doing well. I've got lots of stuff to dig up and move around. Lots of potential down there for some new plantings and up there on the hill going to be doing some things and all good things. Lots of, lots of fun stuff. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? Is it spring yet where you live? I know for a lot of people where it's just creeping and really slow. It's been really mild since February, so it feels weird. Has anybody else been feeling this way? Like I, I have felt like it's spring or even summer since March, but it hasn't been only because in February, a lot of the bulbs started blooming and the trees started to bud out. Some of the like Japanese maples and the, the ones that are more early to go, the pears that are everywhere, those are all, they've been green for such a long time, but, but the garden itself isn't doing much because I mostly have heat loving plants too, right? All the bananas and cannas and gingers and all those things, they like heat. And that's been very sparse. It'll be like a few days of really warm temperatures and then just 60s, which is fine. The 60s is very pleasant. That's the sweet spot for getting hard work done which I should probably, I should get on top of that. I have some stuff I need to do. Okay, like I said, comment down below. Say hi, I love talking to everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Oh, I was gonna talk about the new impatience that I put down there in the hydrangea. You just have to wait till next weekend. It wouldn't make sense if I talk about it right now anyways. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.